Hey guys, welcome back to my Solo Fighter Illusionist playthrough, and we're going to start out by doing the Illithid Lair. The main thing to be watching out for is the intelligence drain that Mind Flayers have. So if your intelligence is reduced to zero, you die instantly. Now one thing that you can do in order to make life a little easier is use protection for magical weapons, because they still need to hit you through that. So you're safe for four rounds while you have that up. But the better solution to take care of them is to use something like Mord Swords in order to kill them, because Mord Swords cannot be drained. It's a little bit of a slow start to this area, but be careful if you do use a cloud spell like me here, because there is a chance that the Githyanki, when they go to fight, will get hit by it and then turn hostile against you. We are not alone in this place. It is the worst of fates, for we are entrapped by the feared and despicable Illithids. And we are drawn to the fight. Weapons ready, my charges, for we are about to be taken into the sight of the most hated Illithids. You there, we have fought in our battle. And I believe we are scheduled to face each other when next the Jailer comes. May you all crush you. Crush you! The ogre here has inflated stats compared to what you would expect. We also pick up the equalizer hilt here. The main thing with the equalizer is that it was kind of used as an offhand weapon because it gives a damage bonus depending on alignment of the enemy and I think it goes up to a plus six for stuff like chaotic evil which is a decent damage boost but I heard that has been changed recently and it no longer does that. In which case, the weapon itself isn't really that fantastic. It does give you some immunities, but apart from that, it's nothing special, I would say. If it must be done. You have done well, and the Git Yankee are now. Huh? 
It's probably best left to me. There's going to be a lot of mine players in the next few rooms especially, so we're going to bring out the Mord Swords and use haste on them. They only have one attack per round, so you don't need to use improved haste or anything like that. The Mord Swords do have quite a short duration, so I only use two here and then another two castings in the main room. This fight ends up being kind of a mess because I'm trying to mind control one of the mind flares to go over to the uh, other room. And I kind of get stuck in the door a bit. So yeah, I go invisible after that. Mind flares cannot detect invisibility, so that is one thing that you can use to your advantage. The Elder Brain up here isn't that difficult a fight, so two of the swords and me using improved haste on myself should be enough to handle it pretty easily. I don't know if the Brain summons anything, so I always go for it first, but the Mind Flayers are there as well. I don't know if this is a glitch or anything, but I've noticed I haven't been able to change into Slayer form. After you leave Spellhold, I think as soon as you rest, you should get a dream, and you should be able to change into Slayer after that. But I've just not been able to, the ability is just not there. So I don't know if it's a bug of some kind, or if I'm just misremembering when you actually get the Slayer ability. But you are able to use the Slayer form to open those doors if you aren't mind controlling one of the mind flayers and then using them. I wouldn't particularly want to change into the Slayer anyway because apart from the 25 strength it gives you, it's not very useful for me. You'll notice that I memorized Mislead a bit earlier, and Mislead is a spell which I have not used very much, and it is a very cheesy spell if the enemy cannot see through invisibility, or if they if you have spell immunity divination up, then they aren't going to be able to cast True Sight on you or anything like that. But as you can see, 
As long as my clone is out of sight, then the drow cannot attack me at all. So I realize this is pretty cheesy after I do it immediately, but I've never really used mislead very much. Um, it does last for a decent amount of time as well. I think it's one round per level. I end up unmemorizing it just because, yeah, it's not very fun to watch exactly if the enemies can't even fight back. There are some enemies that can see through invisibility innately, like, for example, dragons or the Kuatoa welcome, for some reason. Welcome to my lair. I have watched your progress with great interest. We're going to go through the normal path of Isnatha via um, getting the eggs for Adon, but I thought it would be kind of fun to try and take out Adon now. So one thing that I do know that she does is she does cast the spell magic. So I do need spell immunity abjuration in order to deal with that. And the other thing is she uses ice spells, but the cloak of mirroring should deal with most of them. And like I was saying before, the wing buffet. If I cast blur and improve invisibility, I think I'm almost immune to it, as far as I know. I don't know if protection from magical weapons would do the same thing. But yeah, you're going to see my fight against that one here. She does knock off my stone skin at one point and it ends up uh, taking me down to about half health. But as soon as you can get the protections off her with Zaf the Magi, or alternatively, I could have used stuff like Pierce Shield or Ruby Ray and then used the Breach, then it's pretty much easy after that point because you just do so much damage when you're using critical strike if you are wanting to get the human flesh armor where you do need to be evil in order to wear it then you will need to kill out one but otherwise we're just going to reset the save after this point but you can see the damage you do at the end after you get rid of stone skin So resetting our save and not doing that, we head over to Usnatha. Now there is the main quest there and it does take a while to get through it and they do put quite strict time limits on you in order to do everything, otherwise the whole city gets pissed at you. So we're, there are a couple side quests in there that I do but the main thing that I'm doing is just following the main quest here. And we're going to pick up Ruby Ray here, which is nice. And we're also going to pick up the Fire Tooth Dagger. Now, I don't know if I'll ever use this, to be honest. Because, like I said, I don't really need a ranged weapon. If I do, then I'll just use something like Mel's Minute Meteors anyway. So I end up uh, memorizing Ruby Ray instead, mainly because I do see Skull Trap being used quite a lot. So it probably is the better spell to use. Another thing to note about Ruby Ray is the fact that it's an alteration spell instead of a abjuration spell like all the other protection removal spells we're gonna do both of the arenas in this area they're not too difficult anyway I do use true sight for the mages to speed things up a little bit but otherwise it's really great experience that you may as well get while you're here And this is the point where we're also hitting 6 million experience. So we're getting level 9 spells as a mage. We immediately get 2 spell slots for level 9 spells. I put my high level abilities in to improve the lacrity and summon planetar. Because I believe they're the best mage uh, high level abilities. But we are going to pick up dragon's breath as well just to have it. 
Otherwise, I'm probably going to put some points into Greater Whirlwind Attack. And also, I don't really see a point in stuff like Hardiness, because I already have Stone Skin. So it's mainly going to be Critical Strike and Greater Whirlwind Attack that I'm going to choose to get. that have been sent my way, I see. As if I do not have enough to accomplish in a day without suffering for the welfare of the weak. I do what I must, when I must. Know this well. left to me I'm gonna show off the planetar here because these enemies up here that spawn after you get into the city can actually be pretty difficult because one of the I think one of the mages has imprisonment so it's just a pain so what I do instead is summon a planetar put improved haste on it and I think it has like five or six attacks per round and it also has an insta kill effect chance as well, like a vorpal effect. So it just ruins these guys in general. And we're gonna fight through and rescue Foray at this point. So we're gonna fight in our few mind flares, but they aren't really an issue for us at this point. One thing I don't really show off is the fact that the Planeter does have spells like Global Blades. It can also heal you and it has quite a lot of spell abilities that it can use. The AI is pretty competent with them though, um, they will heal themselves when they get damaged and stuff like that. be done. I'm a little unfamiliar how Usnatha usually goes, 
But I actually went to the wrong place because you need to meet them in the other area first. But yeah, we're going to kill a beholder over there and then continue the quest. It's a lot of small quests like that. But if you've done some of the side areas, like either the Beholder Ware, the Elithid, or the Kuatoan areas, then you already have the blood that you need for this quest line. Ah, uh, it is you again. Smiles on us today. We have spat in the great eye of the eye tyrants and live to tell the tale. This is a little side quest you can do over this side of the uh, area. I think you need to do some of the main quests in Usnatha before this Aboleth will speak to you. But yeah, he, he basically wants a brain from one of the uh, drow priestesses. And it's a fairly easy fight, I just go in there with improved haste and wreck shit, basically. This character is just really powerful at this point, and will continue to be till the end of the game. And it's kind of why arcane magic is so key in Baldur's Gate 2. These mages look like they have protection from magical weapons on. So they're protected from all my weapons for about 4 runs. They're honestly not worth wasting a, a breach on, or uh, if they do have spell protections on as well. And I just let them cast whatever they want in me, because they're really not hitting me with anything. Of course, we're not actually going to kill Solophane here. We take his cloak, but we take the eggs later on in order to finish off the quest. I think if you say that you already have the blood at this part of this quest, it just moves you on immediately. So I say I'll be back because there's a, there's a side quest we can do here involving a lich. It's just not a witch fight, but at this point we can actually use Ruby Ray and then Breach and then just take him out that way. And it's a fairly easy fight after that happens. This place will be your tomb. 
too. The best surfacer is a dead surfacer! The process of primacy for a male lies either in the bedchamber or the books of the majors. Say to it. This is I do try and cast Breach on this guy, but witches always seem to get their time stop off because they always cast it first almost. I noticed that he loves to cast the symbol spells for some reason. They do have a negative 4 spell penalty, but since my saves are so good it doesn't even matter. I do think Liches have at least one cast of Maze memorized, which would actually cause an instant game over for me. But I've rarely seen them cast it. Of course, in order to get around Maze you would need to do Spell Immunity Conjuration, not Abjuration, as you would for Imprisonment. We shall rule supreme. be done. It's probably best left to me. Glory for the Dark Mother! Do not question the Matron Mothers. I do go ahead and use Incendiary Cloud for this cult in the bottom area, but I have had it before where a random drow would walk into the cloud and then the entire city would aggro on me. So I don't know how safe it is to actually use area spells like this over here. But as you can see, Incendiary Cloud does great damage against whatever it does work on, but remember that it is fire damage. All that's left for us to do in Usnatha at this point is to do the last part of the egg quest. And then I think it's a couple minutes and then basically the entire town will aggro on you. You could stay and fight them but I decide to just get out as soon as possible. And that pretty much wraps up the Underdark after that. We pretty much just head to the surface and that's the end of that. So I'm thinking about where to go after this because Umar Hills is something that I could have easily done before I went to Bryn Mawr and started the linear path. There's also the Windspear Hills and the Planar Sphere that we need to do. And I'm thinking I probably want to do the first two levels of Watcher's Keep at least. And I'm thinking we might want to do the first few levels of Watcher's Keep because we can get the Poison Flail 
for the flail of the ages and as soon as we go into throwing a ball we can pretty much upgrade that immediately so I'm, I'm considering doing the first few levels of Watcher's Keep, leaving it for a while and then going back in and throwing a ball. But I think that pretty much wraps up everything that I need to do, aside from the main quest in Shadows of Arm. There's also the Cult of the Unseeing Eye, which I haven't done, which should be a fairly easy run through, really. So we, we'll probably wrap up those areas. We will hit the experience cap before we finish all of them, but I'll try to do all the main areas in the it's game. Best oh, it is you me. Come before me. Concern. I hope this is worth it. Yeah, I'll see to it. I see you there. <laughs> Good luck to you. We leveled up his fighter again and we get another proficiency. This one, since I put the last in at quarter staff at this point, I do put to two handed weapon style. And probably the last point I'm going to put is going to be in two handed swords so I can use the soul reaver eventually. I put a point into the dragon's breath HLA, but I don't know how useful that's going to be. I don't really see the point of comet or energy blades for us, so I'm just going to skip those. So I end up using time stop here because there is quite a few drow in this area. So the great thing about time stop for a fighter mage is you can just run up and whack people. And if you have improved haste active before you go into the time stop, it, the buff will stay with you obviously. So you can eliminate quite a few enemies before you even do anything. It's just great. So especially if you have like 10 attacks per round, that's just so devastating. It only lasts 3 rounds. But it's just incredibly good. Now, if you do want to go the more spell oriented way, you can use Improved Alacrity and then just basically empty your spell book. As much as you have tried. We shall never surrender the hardwoods. So finally to the surface, we're going to speak with Elhan, and that's pretty much going to be the end of the Underdark. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Well, I thank you for coming.
Wait a minute. Let's see.